Right, so this question came up quite a while ago on one of my very early videos. Um, I was trying to put up a uh, inverted L um, for 80 meters in my back garden and uh, I put a ballon on the feed point. Now, someone commented on that and said, why are you using a ballon at the feed point? The coax is unbalanced and the vertical is unbalanced with respect to your radials. Why not a direct connection between the coax and the vertical element? Absolutely correct. Um, I can't argue with that. The coax cable is unbalanced, as is the vertical. So why would I put a ballon at the feed point? Now, this is a subject I have literally seen people debate for hours. Um, it came up while I actually asked the question when I was when I'd only just got my license, I asked uh, a couple of people this at a club meet and uh, I actually regretted asking it because uh, four hours later at the end of the uh, day they, they were still arguing the point between them. So I'm going to give you my take on it and I'm actually interested to see what your view is in the comments below. So let me show you first um, the Ballon which I put uh, on the base of the antenna, which is this one. Now, we're talking, we're not talking half waves here. We're basically talking uh, essentially a quarter wave vertical. So whether that's a quarter wave for 40, quarter wave for 20, or in the case of the video, which I'll put a link to, um, is essentially a quarter wave for 80, which uh, went up about, I think it was about seven or eight meters and then across for the rest of uh, the uh, antenna. So I'll show you uh, the balance. This is the one I put up. Now if I switch onto my other camera down here so you can uh, see what I'm looking at here. I've already unscrewed the uh, uh, the top so you can see inside and if I hold it up so you can see the camera. So this Basically, if you look at what you've got, it's a bit tricky to see, and I'll try and point it out with the uh, screwdriver here, but you've got two earth connections here. So your coax cable comes in here, you've got your uh, shield, and you've got your uh, center conductor there. Um, the, the way they've wound this is a little bit strange, because what actually happens is uh, you've got your um, shield connection there, which uh, wraps around the, uh, uh, the ferrite, around here and the same with your uh, uh, shield connection that side um, the center pin actually splits into two and runs in parallel around with your uh, wires from the shield both sides and until it gets to the other side of the uh, ferrite ring and then uh, what they've done then is they've joined them together and uh, this side here is your earth connection or ground connection and this side here is your driven element. And if I get my uh, probes here for my meter, now you can't see the meter, it's actually off camera, but uh, if I connect my two probes together, you can hear the uh, meter beep. So what we've actually got here is if I go to, and I'll try and do this so you can see it on camera. So if I go to center pin and uh, the uh, shield, you see nothing. Uh, center pin to the ground, nothing, and center pin to your radiating element, here I've got a connection there. Now if I go from the uh, shield to the center, nothing, shield to the ground, there you go. And this um, top uh, thread here isn't connected to anything, that's just to uh, uh, attach the ballon to hang the ballon or whatever you do. So what we've essentially got is if I switch onto uh, my uh, screen capture here, uh, I've got a nice diagram here. So what you've basically got, that's your uh, coax connection there. And you've got the two wires go in. Now, as I showed you on my ballon, the wires actually split and go around one either side, but really it's doing exactly the same thing as this. So what you've got is two wires run parallel around your ferrite core several times. 
they've run it through the center on this drawing again same difference around and then comes out the other side you've got your uh, hot connection for want of a better word there which is your uh, center connector and you've got your earth connection there goes to your uh, ground radials so this is basically doing the same thing as uh, as my um, balance now I think this is where the confusion comes in for a lot of people because I'm calling this I refer to this as a ballon, which technically it is. You could use it as a ballon in the center of a balanced antenna like a dipole, which uh, I've done, and it's it works absolutely fine for that. But in this case, essentially what we've got actually is um, more of a choke. And if I switch you on to my other uh, camera, this came with my... Um, 12 meter spider beam mast when I bought it and if you think back to the uh, um, drawing I've just shown you on the screen the diagram this is essentially the same thing so um, this is basically a choke so I refer to it as a ballon but essentially what I'm really doing by putting this um, at the base of the antenna what I'm really doing is putting an RF choke in there and um, you can see here actually this is for 40, uh, 40 meter vertical on uh, 12 meter poles so it's, uh, it's a quarter way vertical for 40 at the feed point there so your center connector goes to your vertical element and uh, your uh, shield goes to your radials there and uh, it says there feed point 50 ohm coax uh, RF choke recommended so the uh, upshot of this really is you don't have to put a ballon in there or sorry I should really really calling it a ballon isn't correct I should really be calling it a choke um, so you don't have to put a choke there and in fact this is um, something I made up for uh, uh, going portable just as lightweight um, it's literally just a bit of electrical conduit and I put two bolts in there these two bolts are isolated from each other and um, literally just attach my coax on there that goes to my uh, um, that goes to the shield of the coax so that's the radials and that side goes to uh, the center of the coax so that's your vertical element so you absolutely can connect um, your coax direct onto your uh, vertical the problem i had with that in my personal situation was um, and it was partly I'm sure due to deficiencies, other deficiencies within my shack, is um, I was getting all sorts of uh, RF problems. You key up, the mouse would go haywire. I had uh, monitors turning off. I was getting RF in the shack, so um, I messed about for ages putting uh, ferrite beads on all of my connections into and out of the computer, and I managed to tame it to some degree. But I put a ballon on the base of the uh, vertical and it just completely stamped it out and uh, started working. Now, it shouldn't be so much of a problem if you've got a decent ground system. So, um, it, like I say, it's a bit of a fierce debate. Some people will argue that you do need it. Some people will argue that you don't. Um, the other thing I want to show you, just to uh, complicate things a little bit, if you think back to my video I did on the uh, loop on the ground counterpoise, I actually used one of these. Now, let me switch you on to the other camera again. Um, this is, uh, you get this from uh, Cross Country Wireless here in the UK. Um, it says they're HF isolator and low pass filter. So this has got a low pass filter in it as well, which uh, can help with uh, taking out some of the local noise and uh, see there I've got resistors um, it also serves for a bit of uh, static and lightning protection as well you've got a capacitor in there so if I get my uh, meter on it again you will notice I've got to remember which one's the yeah so this is the uh, connection to the um, ground uh, radials you've got a separate connection for your earth rod here but you notice um, that none of these See, I've got my shield to my earth there, absolutely nothing. Shield to my ground there, absolutely nothing. 
Um, sorry, I've got my hand in the way, you can't see it there. I'm, I've just got that on the, uh, car on the uh, shield coax connection. If I go to the uh, center pin and uh, to the earth, nothing, nothing. Even if I go to my vertical element, nothing. So how's this thing connected? Because here's the interesting thing. If I uh, go from my center connector to the uh, shield, yeah, there you go. So it's basically a short circuit at DC. If I go from my uh, ground connection, uh, sorry, from my, this is my uh, vertical element to uh, the radials. Again, effectively a short circuit at DC. So what have we got? Well, in order to uh, make sense of this, let me switch you on to um, my screen capture here again. Now this was an article written by um, a guy called Chris, I forget his call sign, he runs Cross Country Wireless, um, who are the people that sell that. And this actually appeared in the October uh, 2020 edition of uh, Radcom, which uh, for um, uh, my foreign viewers, for American viewers, this uh, Basically, the RSGB, the Radio Society of Great Britain, release a magazine to all its members every month. Um, the RSGB is the equivalent of uh, your ARRL, basically. So it's a magazine we get every month, and this appeared in it. And uh, it gives you all details here about uh, loop on the ground. I've done a video on this already. Um, but this is the diagram of what's going on inside that... Um, I was about to call it, I was about to wrongly call it a ballon. It's really, it's a, an HF antenna analyzer, sorry, HF antenna isolator and low pass filter is what they call it. So you'll notice basically it's a transformer. So you've got your SO239 socket there, through your wire there, you've got a capacitor there, and uh, same on this side for your vertical antenna and loop. Counterpoises. So it's basically a one-to-one -one transformer, but you've also got this uh, gas discharge tube with a resistor there to your ground rod for your um, for your lightning protection and well, well, static discharge is probably a better way of putting it because uh, I'm not sure how well this would cope to being directly struck by lightning. So basically, what you're doing is completely isolating the um, coax from your antenna so that's essentially what this is doing so to summarize then do you need a um ballon choke call it what you will i guess technically i should be calling that a choke in line depends on your setup depends if you're getting uh, rf interference will you get losses from putting that in the line i guess theoretically yes those, to be honest, those losses are so minimal that uh, you, you're not going to notice it. So the, are there benefits to it? I think possibly there are. Um, the experts will tell you that it'll help to uh, reduce a little bit of noise and certainly it helped a little bit in my case. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things, I guess I personally consider it to be uh, best practice to put one in there can you run it without yes you absolutely can so I don't know let me know what you think in the comments below because uh, I'm interested this is an interesting debate um, some people are adamant that you absolutely do need it in there other people are adamant that you absolutely don't um, I'm a little more neutral on the fence I prefer to put one in there because I consider it to be a uh, good practice but probably if I'm honest not completely uh, strictly speaking necessary.